Assalamu alaikum. So, my name is Hassan Abu Shoy, and I'm here today to share with you our story at Hassoub, as we see social and economic change through entrepreneurship and technology. The story began when I dropped out of university of my computer science degree and went to work as a software engineer in Tel Aviv. Well, actually, I was a self certified engineer. <laughs> when I came to Tel Aviv, I was truly overwhelmed by the thriving startup ecosystem and by the number of events, conferences, competitions, startups, and entrepreneurs that lives there. And I enjoyed, truly enjoyed, engaging and being into this ecosystem. But there's a sad story. Let's let's back the story to this. Let's back the part of this story. And it happens every time I came back to my village. So this is how Tel Aviv looks, and this is how my village looks. And so in our village we have no events, no conferences, no competitions. No startups, no entrepreneurs, even no role models to inspire us. I still remember going to a conference in Tel Aviv with a friend, and where dozens of local startups presented and pitched their ideas, but unfortunately, none of them were Arabs. So my friend and I discussed over a cup of coffee and thought that we lacked this role of models, and also we realized that we, both of us as technologists, are not less qualified. Sorry, let's turn this one. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, sorry, okay, sorry. And we also realized that both of us are not less qualified than any of the other founders or entrepreneurs that we just saw pitching. So our plan was to make to work in our village, inside our village, on, an, on a, our startup and to get an investment from an Arab investor. And we thought maybe that can spark a change in our community. So we met uh, our com to in our community. So <laughs> sorry. So I'm coming from the Palestinian community, the Arab community living inside of Israel, and which faces and struggles financially. We have a lot of economical issues in our community, starting from the fact that it's a consuming community, down to the fact that over 53% of us are living under poverty line and that we are still stuck in traditional industries while in high tech and technology we're still like we're 20 percent of the population and we're only roughly less than two percent of the startup nation so this from one side we have this hard external circumstances and discrimination against us as a minority living inside inside our land and from the other side we have our own restrictions and, and our own internal challenges Starting with our con uh, starting with our mentality that still discourages innovation and entrepreneurship. So my friend and I met and decided to work on something in my parents' uh, basement, and we posted this on Facebook. Eventually, our project failed, like the startup we wanted to work on failed. But we believe that we got out of this experience was much more than the individual story out of the two of us. So what happened is that we posted this photo on Facebook and someone just committed that, hey, I saw you guys working, may I join and just sit beside you and learn app development? Say sure. And then the guy joined and the next two weeks later, two more friends joined. It's a bad, bad phone still, it's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> two more guys joined. And less than a month later, we had this. Like it was my room inside my parents' basement, and we got over 30 people coming from all over the place. People travel for two hours to get there from the north and from the south. And suddenly it, this, it stopped being about the both the two of us, the individual story of us, and it started to be about a cause and a pain in, and a shared pain in our community. People started coming and meeting, and and we had a lot and a lot of activities. We have done over 60 events, 60 weekends like this, where people came from all over the place, technologists, entrepreneurs, designers, and even high schoolers who got inspired by this, by this movement. During these this meetings, we host also hosted entrepreneurs that prior to that didn't have, we had, some, we had some entrepreneurs in our community, but they didn't have the stage or the place to share their expertise and experience and to inspire others. So we invited them and people created work actually on creating things from websites, mobile games, electronics, and other stuff. So it, it was eventually the, 
we had a more structured plan for these days. So people were coming, we set learning groups, and people created and worked on this project. But what happened is that it, go, it went beyond uh, geeky meetings and you know, a technology thing. It became a social group, a community, that wants also to impact our larger society. And this group of people, like great things came out of these meetings, from friendships to job opportunities to projects and other stuff. And people there started, people here started to see that we should not impact only ourselves, but we should also work to impact our whole society. So we started with a series of public events. This was our first event in Umm al-Fahim, a uh, city near my village. And after that, we moved every time in a, to another Arab village and brought entrepreneurs to inspire the young people, to inspire them to make and to create towards entrepreneurship and technology. So we did tons of events. We have uh, we did like conferences and meetups and events and we had our first technology festival where we brought international companies, local startups and other projects to present in Arabic inside the Arabic village, inside Arabic village and towns. So our first festival got over a thousand participants, mostly families and kids who, want, who have never had the opportunity to get exposed to such technologies. Uh, <coughs> this is more, more, more photos. This is the volunteering group of the, there was in the, in the festival. And we held a different projects. This is in Google Campus in Tel Aviv. And we saw the support from the community, also from you know, the global companies inside of Israel. So Google, for example, offered us spaces to, do, to go and do our activities. Microsoft as well, Wix, and other companies. They're willing to welcome us, and we could hold our events there. And this is, we held a startup competition, gave our first check. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> this is more photos from the activities. So basically, I will give you just a glance from some of our activities. For example, we have Hasub Acceleration Program, our Hasub App, where we take, we target different segmentations of the community and do projects based on that segmentation. So for example, in Hasub Acceleration Program, we targeted, uh, the first round we targeted students, and then we targeted young uh, engineers, and we exposed them to the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial world by uh, uh, advisors and experts from the, from the industry. We have our festival, which is today the largest event, technological and innovation event happening inside our Arab society. We got 2,500 2, participants in our last festival. Hasub talks each time we go to another Arab village and bring entrepreneurs there and make an event inside that village to make it more accessible to people. And in our campus Hack Night project, we brought, we saw that there's a problem, and this is something that I believe important in social entrepreneurship, that sometimes you don't have to just copy models that worked in, in another place and just adapt them or get them to work in your society. Some, sometimes you will have to create a new models that fits into the cultural or other aspects of your society. So for example, we saw a problem with, we always encourage people to engage and to integrate into the ecosystem. But sometimes, especially for example, concern, uh, traditional girls, it's hard for them, for example, to go and join events that happens late in the night, usually in bars or restaurants. So we brought experts from the industry to make this, such events and such workshops inside the campuses. We, held, we, we did it in Haifa University and the Technion in Haifa, and we had over 20, in 20 events, 20 workshops where we brought industry, um, we experts from the industry to the campuses to work with the, the students. And it's been a long way since then. It has been three years, and during these three years, we have done more than 250 activities, engaging 10,000 people in our actual activities and more than 34,000 34, people in our online communities. And today we're a more structured organization than, uh, than just a movement. We're a registered nonprofit working in three main impact streams, impact channels. So the first one is raising awareness through our public events. The second one is empowering communities by targeting different segmentations and having pro uh, programs to enrich them both in the technological and entrepreneurial uh, aspects. And the third one is the facilitating innovation where we, we're now opening our first working space for Arab entrepreneurs inside my area where we don't have any place for entrepreneurs to meet and work together. And we're also working on expanding our network towards the Arab world and Turkey. 
So entrepreneurs, so we can facilitate that or entrepreneurs. Uh, <laughs> now, I, another thing I believe in, in social entrepreneurship is that it's uh, all about people, but it's not about individuals. So I believe that, and we started to see that when another, uh, other entrepreneurs and many, many volunteers started to come and volunteer at Hasub. We saw that sometimes we don't agree in things and sometimes we want things to do a bit differently and other stuff. And today um, I have the privilege to have such a great group of uh, volunteers and people who joined and work hardly for this, for this project that I can step back a bit and give the lead to other, to other people. So today I stepped back as the leader of, the of this organization and other people are taking the lead and leading this towards the way of continuing doing impact. I will finish my talk with a, a quote from one of my friends, Confucius, who said that <laughs> if you're planning for one year, then plant rice. If you're planning for 10 years, then plant trees. And that's what we're doing at Hasub. We plant this rice and trees because our community needs them in the shorter term, because, he, because we struggle financially and in the economical aspects. But the code continues and says that if you're planning for 100 years, and if you're planning to do such a longer term impact, then you should invest in educating children. So now after I stepped back of Hasub, I founded Etikar, a new social educational venture for promoting making and technology among kids at schools in underprivileged backgrounds. But that story for the next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.